Good morning, Good everybody. Morning. Good morning. Ah, nice. Everybody's alive. Okay, we're a little late, so let's jump into the commentary today. And we are going to consider now. Uh, we're almost done with the month of October, but we, we're not done with uh, all the uh, mysteries of the rosary. So we will try to expedite. And today we'll talk about the... Uh, Today's Tuesday, so but we're done with the sorrowful mysteries, so we will we will do uh, the luminous today. Luminous, we we have to catch up with the glorious mysteries and the luminous mysteries. Okay, huh? Okay. So um, today we'll talk about the fourth luminous mystery, which is the transfiguration. Transfiguration of our Lord. Okay, let's. Let's try and understand the meaning of transfiguration. It's a, it's a word that you don't often hear. And in fact, um, maybe only appropriately applied to our Lord when this miracle happened. The miracle of the transfiguration. Trans means change. Right? Figure means Huh? Shape. Shape or image. Form. See, form. See? These are all synonyms of the word figure in this case. Okay? Transfiguration. Transfiguration is that miracle where our Lord changed in appearance, changed in form, changed in the way that he could be perceived by the apostles who were there with him in this uh, miracle so what happened here what happened here our lord was about to suffer and die okay on the cross so uh, he wanted to reassure his apostles that he is in fact god so he wanted to reassure his apostles about his divinity okay that he was not just a man, that he was, <clears throat> although he was going to die as a man, he was going to offer his life uh, uh, for the ransom of many, right? That was his mission on earth. He wanted to reassure the apostles and give them hope that after all of this prophecy comes to pass, after everything happens, the crucifixion and death on the cross, there will be glory. So there will be glory. There will be resurrection, which is the hope of our faith. Okay? Our whole Catholic faith, our whole faith in God is anchored on the hope of the resurrection. So that is what we believe. And our Lord wanted to show us that that is true, that that is what's going to happen, that that is what we need to look forward to. Okay, so even before the apostles could witness his crucifixion and death, he already wanted to give them the assurance that there was going to be glory, life of glory in heaven forever. And to do that, he showed them in very uh, 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 in a very material way in a very physical way how that can happen so he took the three uh, closest apostles to him who were they Peter James and John right the three apostles who witnessed um, uh, many other things that the others perhaps did not. Okay? So they were favored by Jesus to witness some special miracles. And this was uh, one of them, the transfiguration. So he brought them up a high mountain. And when he was there, when he was there, he allowed them to witness a change in his appearance, in his image, where they saw him in his glorious form meaning radiant more radiant than the sun apparently right bright and and really 
luminous. That's why it's part of the luminous mysteries, okay? where he was showing himself in his glory, okay? and and to to uh, reinforce to reinforce the uh, the message that he was the Messiah that the prophets and the law spoke about before he came. Then he brings into that scene two figures, two people, each one standing for the law and the prophets. Okay, So he brought in the lawgiver who was nicknamed the lawgiver. And who was that in the Old Testament? Moses. Moses, <laughs> Moses was the lawgiver, right? Because it was through him that the Ten Commandments was given to the people of Israel. Okay? So he was considered as the lawgiver. So uh, he was the one who, who codified, so to speak, or through him was codified uh, some basic commandments that God expected his people to abide by. And those same commandments are the, exactly the same thing that we follow up to now. Right? Now, on the other hand, there was the prophets. There were the prophets who, uh, uh, together with the, uh, the law, complemented what the law ha that was given through Moses had to say about our moral lives and how we, uh, the early Jews then, had to prepare for the coming of Jesus, the coming of the Messiah. Okay? So now that Jesus is here or was there, then the 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 transfiguration was a a scene where uh he, jesus was actually telling the world through these three apostles that well here it is this is who i am i was the one that the law and the prophets have talked about all this time okay so i am the fulfillment of the law and the prophets and since they already knew him as man, they knew him as uh, their master, okay? the human uh, Jesus, then he wanted to show them his other side. Okay? Well, not quite his other side because of the hypostatic union is one and the same, right? <laughs> but wanted to show them uh, in, a, in the manner we understand it, he wanted to show them that he was also God through that magnificent transfiguration now when peter saw that he couldn't quite understand well, what's going on here <laughs> he didn't know he didn't know what to say he was he was uh out of words and didn't quite know what what he was dumbfounded and and uh and couldn't quite know what to make out of it so he says oh uh, it's good for us to be here. Let's build three tents. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Duh. Are these spirits going to be dwelling in a tent? They don't do that, right? But you see, Peter was so confused, right? Maybe he was so mesmerized at the awesome sight that he was beholding right in front of him that huh, he just had to say something. He just had to say something. He didn't know what to say. He just had to say something. Okay? But anyway, uh, after a few minutes of that kind of experience, our Lord comes back to his normal self, and Elijah and Moses uh, disappeared from the view, okay? and it brought the three apostles back to their senses and realized, wow. We had just witnessed one of the biggest miracles uh, that our Lord uh, could show us. And it was confined to the three of them. Okay? But yet our Lord told them, Shh, don't tell anybody yet about what you saw. Don't tell anybody yet. You will know when to reveal it to them. Okay? Next time, you will know when to reveal it to them. And... Peter and the, and the other two kept this in their hearts and as Jesus uh, obeyed Jesus and did not tell anybody until he has resurrected and until he has gone to heaven right? so beautiful miracle beautiful miracle that uh, we contemplate on the fourth 
luminous mystery. Now, what does that what does that mean for us? Number one is that well that the divinity of Jesus Christ is real. Okay? He showed his own apostles here on earth while he was living what what the resurrection looks like, what our glorious life in heaven can be like. Okay? Because our Lord is the example of what's awaiting all of us if we are to live holy lives, if we are to become saints. That is what we can hope for. A life of glory in heaven forever. Second thing that I think about when I think about the luminous mysteries is or the, the fourth luminous mystery, is that, you know, our Lord appeared in a similar fashion to the saints, to some of the saints, not all the saints, but to some saints, right? You think about uh, how our Lord would show himself in the divine mercy with, with, uh, with uh, his appearance to, um, uh, what's her name now? Uh, Saint Faustina, right? So he also appeared uh, to, to her in, in a radiant form. You could imagine how Our Lady would appear to, uh, uh, at Fatima or at Lourdes, right? With maybe some kind of radiance around her, okay? Um, and it's not to all the saints that Jesus manifested himself in that manner, okay? But, but you see, I want to think of that of that transfiguration happening every time during consecration and communion. That while our Lord is transforming that bread into his own body, right? Which we cannot see. We cannot see uh, it to be like that. But if we, if we, if we, uh, um, if we understand what's happening in transubstantiation, okay, I, sometimes I, I imagine our Lord being radiant like that, like the transfiguration okay, in that piece of bread. And that helps to, to understand the, the real presence of Jesus in the bread. So a third thing that I think about is that many times we need to be able to see the realities of our everyday life in a supernatural way, okay? in a transfigured way, so to speak, that we have to see the, the divine presence of God in the ordinary things that are happening to us. Like Peter, James, and John, I mean, you know, they were just taking a hike up a mountain that was among, and Jesus was a man like them. That's all they thought it was, right? And all of a sudden, Jesus transforms and shows a different perspective about himself. And that's how they would understand that this Jesus we're dealing with is not just a man like us. He is God. Right? So it's like the divinization of everything that is human and material. Making everything human and material divine and giving it a divine, godly perspective. So think about what you do every day. How do you divinize? How do you put God and make your work and your daily activities and your daily chores transformed into something divine, into something worthy of being offered to God? Okay? So you can also transfigure, so to speak. You can transfigure any human endeavor, any material thing you do into something divine, into something worthy of doing for God, offering for God, and performing in God-like fashion. Okay? And that really means, in concrete terms, that really means doing things as best we can, doing things extraordinarily well. And then offering that kind of work to God. And that gives a transfigured um, 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 sense in the everyday, ordinary things that we do. Okay? So let's keep these thoughts in mind as we, as we contemplate the fourth 
luminous mystery, the transfiguration of our Lord. Okay, bye-bye everybody. Till tomorrow again. Hope you have a good day. Bye.